everyone, what about here and welcome to the Invincible, uh, specifically the preview demo that uh, 11-Bit Studios was kind enough to send me. It is a retro-futuristic sci-fi adventure game uh, where I, I'm assuming you're crash-landed or stranded on some kind of alien world and trying to survive in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I haven't watched any of the trailers because I like to go into these fresh, but it had a really nice uh, aesthetic to it, and I will pretty much cover everything... Uh, Everything unrealistic that 11-bit ever makes, or publishes. Welcome to the Invincible Demo. It takes place early in the game, shortly after the beginning. Worry not, following the screen you'll see a brief re recap of the previous events. Uh, demo does not represent the final quality of the game. Cool. Yeah, let's just dive in. I love that illustration on the side. You are an astrobiologist named Yasna. Yasna? I, I'm assuming Yasna or Yasna? A crew member of the Dragonfly, a small research vessel. At the start of the game, Yasna woke up in a f in full space gear, stuck on an alien planet with no recollection of how or why she got there. Checking her equipment, she discovers that her radio receiver is broken, thus she has no contact with the rest of the crew, but suspects they can still hear her. Based on her own journal entries, she's in close proximity to their camp. As Yasna heads to towards her destination, her memories of the last mission slowly return and, well, also reality sets in. Alright, who... Took a little bit. Whoa. Oh, I like that environment. I don't know. There's something about canyons. I grew up in uh in the mountains of New Mexico. Ah, uh, for oh. Thank goodness. Not everyone's in the field. Okay, so we have a uh a GPS kind of to tell me where to go. I d this game looks pretty linear to me, so I'm not this sure how Yasna useful reporting. it is. Do you copy? I'm entering the campgrounds. Yasna. Is anybody out there? Uh, Andrew Watt. I really like this that this aesthetic. Oh. Stop. Andrew Watt. Stop. What the? I'm reporting a robot malfunction. No response to voice commands. Cause unknown. Okay, so can't do that. Let's see if I can get into the rest of these. Looks like I can. Oh, this aesthetic. It's very... It's very intentional. I guess it would be the word I would use. Oh, we have a fish. Crowther was correct. Life on Regis hasn't left the water. Kovel also. He, he said something about it. I'm a huge sucker for retrofuturism as an aesthetic, just because it's one of those where it kind of harkens back to, I don't want to say, like, simpler times. Oop. I think I alt-tabbed out of the game. Oops. But retrofuturism harkens back to, like, simpler times. But it also has this kind of element of here. Maybe I should just use a controller if I'm going to click out of the game. Yeah, let's just do that. I'm not much of a controller guy for point-and-click adventure games. But since this game seems to be mostly walking sim, I think I'll be fine. Um, but there's also a very strong sense of cohesiveness to it. Whereas I feel like... Oh. there is a, There is a person there. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything else. I'm going to hold off on that person for a hot second, just as, in case there's anything else here. It'd be pretty sad if he actually, like, dies. Wait. There was, like, a bump. My controller vibrated. Nothing, though. Um, but, you know, looking around my apartment, there is definitely a feeling of, like, cohesiveness because I tried to select what I pick. But I will go into, like, a furniture store... And it can be completely different from a com different furniture store, and there's no, like, cohesive style anymore. Because we've Dr. branched Carter, too much. Didn't you hear me earlier? Doctor! Is everything alright? Doctor, please wake up. I report that I've located Dr. Crowther. He's in bad shape. I'm gonna examine him now. Hello. Anyone there? I repeat, Crowther is in a serious condition. How 
do I how do I respond? Why can I not respond now? Excuse me. Yasta, can you hear me? Astrogator. Finally. I've been listening to you for two hours. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. Glad you didn't lose your head. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. Testing. One, two, three. Ah, copy you, Doctor. Loud and clear, but to the point. As I understand it, there's only Dr. Crowther in the camp, and he's not well. What happened to him? I... I was just about to examine him. Dr. Crowther, please don't be startled. I need to take your hand. Temperature normal. Pulse 2. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. His pupils respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Yet no response to verbal communication. None. Conclusions, Doctor. Do you have any idea what's wrong with him? Akinesia, mutism, impoverishment of mimic movement, and reaction to stimuli. These are all symptoms of stupor, but it's difficult to pinpoint the cause of this disorder. We need to quickly perform a complete set of tests, primarily a CT scan of his brain. Otherwise, I won't be able to say anything more. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first things first, the lander. We need to get you all on board. Everyone, not just Dr. Crowther. Okay. What should I do? Please look for the mission log. It should include crucial data about the crew's activities. We have three more people to find, and you still need to designate a place for the landing. Okay, find the mission log. Oh, it doesn't look like that's anything. It's kind of the exit, but maybe I'm not supposed to go out that way. I don't see anything of value in there. Whereas this now actually has some things in it. We've got a lamp. If I can interact with it. Lamp, metal detector, and book. Mission log? It's not a mission log, but it will do. Dr. Crowther kept records. Meticulous as always. What's in there? Okay, initial analysis of the Analyses of the samples revealed nickel, iron, manganese, beryllium, and titanium in composition. I give a lot to understand what it actually is. Quick theory, a giant nickel iron meteor uh, splashed into the atmosphere of Regis 3, melting into su in its surface millions of years ago. No, wait, scratch that. The shape of structures contradicts it. I don't know, something in Latin. The most important thing is probably the landing coordinates. AZ2316. Noting 360. Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. Hmm. Dr. Gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west. Ah, that's right. He followed those deposits of metal. Metal? That's why we have detectors. Correct. Mine died, but Crowther had one as well, didn't he? Like everyone in the crew, Doctor. Gel doesn't think it's Latin. Are you looking for the detector? Yeah, just a sec. It's Latin, it's just nonsense? Oh, she's never seen the words before. Got it. Gel kind of mostly knows Latin, maybe. She took a year of Latin. It's more than I did with my six years of Spanish. Oh, got it. Please make sure it works. Okay. Checked. I'm leaving the tent.
now is Bumble Doctor still just Bumble Doctoring? Yep, looks like it. Oh, that's nice. At least it isn't going anywhere. That could be pretty bad. Right. I like the little now airlock the tents. It's unresponsive. Yes, I know. I'm currently trying to establish a connection. Can I help somehow? Just look for the others, Doctor. I'll take care of this myself. Get the tin head back on its feet remotely. And secure Crowter. I have everything I need. Just... Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Ah. Yasna? What are you up to? One sec. I'm looking for it. <sighs> what about the rest of the crew? You gonna make them wait? If the Androbot isn't working properly, I can't just leave Krauter like this. He might hurt himself. Uh, fine. Proceed as you deem fit. Okay, just got to find the relay transmitter. Radio relays. Is this not it? Oh, broken relay. Oh, I can't sprint. Kind of. I have got good news and bad news. The bad news is our signal is far too weak to restart the Andrew bot. The relay malfunction? Not exactly. It's completely fried. But I've seen a spare. That's the good news. Yeah, precisely. I'm going back for it. Oh, I have the extra relay. Excellent. The signal should be back as soon as it's turned on. Okay, set up the relay in close proximity to the camp. Oh, here seems to be fine. If I can figure out how to go up. We apparently cannot climb at all. We have no knees. Why did things get blurry? should already be doing something. Is it still frozen? Yes, unfortunately. <sighs> the positronic brain has correct readings. Receptors. Mm. It's got a very scrawny neck. He moved. Finally. Artie should be walking now. Does he? His positional data hasn't changed. Well, you can see that he really wants to go, but still can't. Uh, please check his legs. Could be the server motor. Ah, that's it. Got you, you tin bastard. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Doctor. I won't hold you any longer. Go get the rest while I finish here. That's an order. Yes, sir. I feel like leaving the robot there is maybe not the best idea. Why is this graying out? Probably a loading thing. Okay, I guess we can climb stuff. Just not often. Yeah, let's Okay, so we actually do have a map that I can pull up whenever. Cool. I'm, uh... I'm gonna head for the one, du this guy first. And we'll see what we can find. I found the area marked by Dr. Krauter. There's no one around. What do you think? Can we land the hopper safely here? I think so. Solid ground. A large flat area. We won't find a better place. Entry point? Will it be 50 meters? Huh? Air accessibility is paramount. 
Yes, it's relatively clean. Huh. It looks like the rocks at the landing area. The, the ones drawn by Crowter. The doctor marked a waypoint. I don't recall... It's, it's just a sketch. No markings. Well, if so, we should do it. What would you call them? They look like bones to me. <sighs> These rocks are white as bones. Bones, then. I'm writing that down. Me too. One more thing, Astrogator. The bones are, well, literally almost white. Unlike the environment around them. Yes, thank you. That's valuable information. Be useful in navigating. Is there anything else to be said or interacted with, or are we good? It's not quite clear how much information he wanted. I'm going to assume that's it. I don't see anything else to interact with. I'm not going to enjoy sprinting in this game, am I? Is that something? No, that's just a rock. Doesn't look like it can go that direction either. Because, yeah, if she's going to get, uh, if she's going to fog up her helmet every time she starts sprinting, uh, then I guess we're going to have to just go full walking sim on this one. Honestly, like, I realize walking sims have become kind of, how would I describe it? A lot of people look down on them. I think they're fascinating. I think they're a really good way of telling an interesting story that's, I mean, akin to a movie, effectively, or... I don't know. Just, there's a lot more opportunity for environmental storytelling and exploration. Where a game that uses, like, extensive combat might... You might just skip it all because you're trying to go fast. Oh, damn! I seem to have gone too far. I can see the field markings that Dr. Gorski left behind. And I haven't found anyone yet. They all may have left the area. But before you move on, make sure to check the whole perimeter. As long as I'm here, let's see if I can spot someone in the distance. Right. Yeah. Anything interesting? Unfortunately, no. I'm going back. Okay, so we do zoom. Oh, that's interesting. So it focuses on whatever you're looking at. Now, can I go down? No, it doesn't look like it. At least not this direction. I'm going to go the other way around real quick. But I think both ways require some amount of climbing. Now, that's another shiny... Shiny rock. Nothing more. I'll just keep wandering. It, it doesn't look like we have any kind of limited oxygen levels, so I can kind of freely do whatever. Okay, maybe not that direction, though. Okay, search the excavation area. Because, yeah, we still don't know what happened to Gorski. I do appreciate that the map is filled in further as we explore. I was worried that we'd have to find more people's sketches rather than drawing it ourselves. Boy, I... Uh, I don't want to say I do not miss the days where you had to map things out yourself. I, I like that in D&D, &D, which I, I think can be kind of fun. But... I saw something explode over here. Or something. Uh, I, I like it in D&D &D where the DM can kind of help you. I don't like it in video games where they can't. Uh, I think mostly it just boils down to making my own map is really fun in like maybe a handful of games. And most other games is just a chore that feels like it was tacked on to make the things... research area. Clear for now. Tracker? Silent. By the way, what did they find here? Oh, right. You don't remember. A piece of metal sticking out of the ground. Sounds inconspicuous, but in this desert environment, it's a phenomenon. 
The artifact turned out to be too big to dig up or to subject to chemical and spectrometric analysis. Dr. Gorski set out to investigate its source to find some end. And? Did he? That I don't know, fortunately. It's here. I can see the structure. I'm in the right place. Understood. Please continue. That goes kind of deep. Okay. Got someone. I'm following the signal. I think I'm gonna have to go around to go up. Ooh, music's good. Huh? It, there's something on the ground. A journal. It's a journal. Geological cross section measurements. These are Merritt's notes. Oh, she must be somewhere close. Please search the entire area thoroughly. We must focus on both water chemistry testing and geological drilling. Possibility of life deep in the ocean. Layers of sedimentary clay interspersed with blackish red substance, not geological, not planetary, millions of years old at least. Cosmos Solidary Evidence or Alliance. Uh, let's see, dear Doctor Mar Merritt, this is in response to the latest interplanetary conference. We'd like to offer you a position in the future expedition. In the future expedition, Obelisk O3 as an astrogator. Your skills and overall performance in previous missions prove to us your readiness to take the next step in the space journey. We'd be delighted to receive your response as soon as you are back from your current mission. Sincerely, General uh, Perzard. Okay, can I close it? Unless there's another page to flip. Doesn't look like it. I don't know what that brop noise is. That one worries me. I think it's because it reminds me of sound effects from Signalis. Oh, there we go. Well, that's worrying. The signal's coming from a castle of backpack. That's concerning. I'm close, but I can't see her. Uh, wait, aren't these backpacks kind of important? Like, that's where your communication device is. She's here. I found her. What's her condition? Marit! 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 Oh. Well, unfortunately, that looks to be the, uh, the, re the end of the demo, at least for now. Uh, one heck of a cliffhanger, honestly, but, eh, it's fine. I'm definitely, I'm definitely getting some Signalis vibes from this. Obviously, I don't think there's going to be any combat, nor would I hope. Like, I think combat or any kind of action gameplay would not work with these controls. I think I'd get quite frustrated with it, but I like the investigation. I like the fact that I have, like, different scopes and meters and ways of tracking things. Uh, it feels much more scientific, rather than your usual scientist of, like, I'm a scientist, but I, here's a gun, and now I'm somehow... You know, on par with Gordon Freeman. Does it make sense? No. I don't know. I, I don't hate that trope. Uh, but on the flip side, I actually really like it when scientists are, in fact, scientists in these games. So I'm going to quit out of the game. I We might as well, seeing as I was a little short, we might as well take a very quick peek at the uh, Steam page. I guess watch the trailer? Sure, why not? I want more. That's not the right display. Looks like we actually have quite a couple of trailers here. Eh, why not? That's a little shrill. I believe in mankind. In its unlimited possibilities. I believe in man. In its unwavering position on the top of the evolutionary pyramid. That is why I, wholeheartedly, Having knowledge of our spectacular advancements, believe in 
the success of every interplanetary mission. They say per aspera ad astra, through hardship to the stars. And I add, because between the stars is our place. Enough of this nonsense. I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to fight anymore. All right, Yasna. Have it your way. You did everything you could. Holy smokes, that's cool looking. That wasn't enough. There's something about those tones, the like kind of off tones. I, I don't know how to describe them, but I, I'm going to keep going back to that Stellaris com or Stellaris Signalis comparison. Uh, I mean, just every single aspect of this has that kind of like weird pseudo retro futuristic alternate sci fi that is deeply wrong. And I super dig that. Life on Regis 3. The probability of encounter. Oh, this the is pleasantly archaic. On the planet is zero, zero, and two. In purely practical terms, this means less than nothing. The composition of the air here is four percent methane and sixteen percent oxygen. The presence of methane creates the possibility that some form of life could exist here. Yet, despite these favorable conditions. It can be argued that the land surface of the planet is devoid of life, both in terms of herbivores and predators. In other words, Regis 3 is safe. Regis 3 is safe. Regis 3 is safe. Regis 3 is safe over and over again. Who? One way or another, really digging this. I think we'll I, I think I'll stop watching trailers at this point. Or it's just going to repeat on me. Uh, just because, I don't know, it's going to get kind of repetitive. But I think I think this is going to be really cool. Like I said, I don't play a whole lot of walking sims. I think they usually don't fit on the channel. And also I find them, they tend to be more horror-based in, like, modern times and reality. And, you know, give me this. Give me weird aesthetics. These, like, bizarre spider tank droids. These really soft and almost kind of plastic toy-looking interfaces and everything like i don't know it's really cool uh but with all of that said the invincible is going to be out sometime later this year my bet would be probably around halloween uh if only because uh, style aesthetic and subject matter but i could i could be wrong with that one looks like somebody's maybe alive maybe uh i guess uh to go back to what we were playing in the game with the person passed out on the ground there is oxygen, so there's the possibility that they didn't, in fact, uh, suffocate. Normally on a planet, you see a char uh, character without their backpack curled up, and you think, oh yeah, that's a person who's run out of air. Uh, but that might not actually be the case here. I don't know. Anyway, so with all that said, uh, if you like The Invincible, uh, check out the Steam page and add it to your wish list. It uh, promotes it for everybody else to see. And honestly, I think it's going to be a really cool game. Anyway. But with all that said, I guess thank you to 11-Bit Studios for giving me access to this preview demo. And if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But with that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.